a pleasant morning all i welcome you all for the fifth day of the national level fdb on reading back to basics jointly organized by lti and shri ramakrishna engineering college coimbatore now i would like to inform you about today's scheduled sessions from 10:30 am the first session is at 10:30 am uh, it is a round table discussion moderated by dr mohan raj the second session starts at 11:45 to be handled by dr kamala kannan on reading in relation to other skills the third session to be handled by dr zavier at 3 pm on using technology to reading skills and the final session is at 4:15 to be handled by dr sherif on e reading and audio books before we we move on to the round table discussion i would like to introduce dr mohan raj dr mohan raj worked as a teacher educator at the english and foreign languages university hyderabad india he has teaching experience of more than 40 years and has published nearly 200 research papers in national and international journals he has also authored course books and books on teaching english he is a recipient of professional teaching award from tesol in the year 2010 his major areas of interest are teacher education materials development and education technology at present he is working as a visiting professor at the netaji subhash open university in developing their curriculum and courseware for ma elt program sir i would like you to take over the round table discussion sir please thank you very much lena for a very warm welcome and the introduction thank you sir in the, in the first place i'd like to congratulate uh, Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College, as well as LTI, for organizing this wonderful FDP. It's been keeping all of us busy, active, and thinking. I think that's the best takeaway that we can have had from uh, an FDP like this. This morning, we are going to have uh, a roundtable, and this is conceived slightly differently. We thought, okay, we have brought in quite a few. experts from uh, outside 30 odd people and you have been listening to them why not give you a chance to express your opinion on what you have already heard so far and how it has impacted you therefore we have invited four participants who can express their opinion who can share their experience of reading who can share their problems and the ways in which they have developed with us this morning the four participants come from absolutely different backgrounds the first participant fatima ji she is fatima mary she is a professor uh, with a long standing experience uh, she is uh, also into administration because she is into faculty development affairs and a counselor Uh, she works in a college called CMR College of Engineering and Technology in Hyderabad. She has not only teaching experience at the college, but she has also taught at the school level. So she brings in rich teaching experience at two different levels, which are not identical at all. And besides teaching, she is also into skills development training. So she has the trainer hat. as well with her and a very welcome a warm welcome to you fatima ji we look forward to uh, listening to you thank you thank you very much sir the second participant comes with a slightly different background most of us we claim ourselves as esl teachers that is english as second language teachers but here is a teacher who has a very long experience of teaching english as a foreign language i am talking of Nagakala, Nagakala Nanjan Gold Gopal Krishna, and uh, Dr. Nagakala, could you come on, come on the screen, please? Uh, she has she belongs to Mysore and she has been teaching for over thirty years now. But most of her work has been abroad in countries like Libya, Saudi Arabia, etc., with uh, a short stint in India, and she has been. Uh, uh, student of mysore university taught by veterans like dr u r anantamurthy the well known 
novelist and Nana Preet Award winner. Apart from teaching, she has made several presentations in uh, national, international conferences. She has published papers and she is somebody who holds ELT very, very close to her heart. We are happy she is here with us to share her experience. Welcome, Dr. Nakala. The next participant is Amita Butch. Amita Butch is from Gujarat, and uh, she, as part of Amita, yeah, uh, she she has uh, done a lot of research in the area of ELT. She has obtained an MLit degree from uh, the Central Institute of English and Foreign Languages you know, uh, quite some time ago, and subsequently she has worked in several institutions and has been a consultant to quite a few international organizations like the BBC. She has contributed to programs like Speak Edge and English Edge, two of the major uh, BBC programs. And she has been an ELT trainer at Wordsworth ELT in Ahmedabad. Besides working in the field of ELT, she brings with her the experience of working as a journalist for India today. And she is and not for a short period, but as long as 13 years she has been with uh, India today. And therefore, her, her experience, uh, the, the, the experience that she shares would be very, very different. Amita, uh, warm welcome to you. And finally, we have um, Vamshi, could you please come on the screen? We have the youngest of the participants, Vamshi Krishna. He is um, a student of MA English. He is in the third semester and he is studying at Adikavi Nanaya University. He has varied interests as far as uh, language and literature is concerned. And one good thing that we have found is he is one person who has attended almost all the sessions without fail so far in the last four days, all, all the sessions he has attended and not just attended, but he has been also active uh, expressing his opinion, asking questions, putting up comments on the chat box. Uh, that's, a, that's a very positive sign we see in you, Vamshi. Most welcome. We would look, look forward to uh, seeing. In the last four days, we have been listening to brilliant presentations covering different aspects of reading. We began with, uh, of course, I, I'm not going in a chronological order, nor am I summarizing everything that we have done. We began with Madhavi uh, Reddy, who presented alternative ways of, uh, alternative sources to reading. And she had made a survey of a large number of uh, websites that were available to us. And this, this was a fascinating presentation. And later, when we got to people like Professor Lal, Professor Ramani, Professor Elango, Mangalam Nilakantan, etc. We got back to conventional reading and we looked at what are some of the problems that we can have as far as uh, reading is concerned, how these can be overcome, how many types of comprehension there can be, and what are the types of strategies that we can use in order to develop our own reading skills. And yesterday, we had a very interesting presentation by, from Al, Albert Tran, who took us to the field of digital reading, where he was able to show us how it is possible for us to sift the genuine material from the fake. And he gave, gave us several strategies by which we can, uh, we, can, we can use the social media, but we can use, we should, we learn how we learn to use it with a lot of caution. So having listened to all this, our participants, all the, all the four of them have been very regular attendees. They have learned all this. From this, let's see what they have to share with us based on their learning here and their own life experience. To begin with some ground rules, I'll ask some sort of a question to trigger your response. And let's, I'll, I'll call out the name and let's go in a sequence rather than make it uh, 
uh, group discussion, which is not possible on a medium like this. So each one of you can take a maximum of about three minutes so that we will have about we will have uh, an opportunity to respond to about two or three questions over the next 45 minutes or so. At the end of each of your uh, responses, I probably will uh, do a bit of summarizing of your responses for the sake of uh, the audience. And later, if we have time, let's take some questions from the audience. That will be the ground rule. So I take that all of you are proficient readers. And you were not born proficient readers, but you developed yourself into proficient readers by some sort of a struggle. So we would like to know what were the types of problems you had when you began reading? Was there some coercion from your parents, teachers, or elders at home? Or did you take to reading just like a duck takes to the water? What's your experience? Could we begin with Nagakala? Uh, Nagakala, would you like to respond to this? The types of reading habits you have done. Uh, you please unmute yourself, Nagakala. On the top, you see the second icon, the microphone icon. Okay. Right. Can you? Right. Good morning to everybody and uh, thanks a lot to Dr. Mohan Raj who has given a very good introduction about me and uh, <clears throat> well um, actually to say is uh, I was very much uh, fortunate because in my house uh, all most of them are teachers and we have a lot of books of different genres and of different languages even. So I started to pick up uh, some books like, you know, even though I couldn't uh, understand, I would try to read some of the books. My father was uh, not in the teaching line. He was in a marine, uh, he was a marine engineer. So he had a lot of collections of books. Like those mostly were like, you know, when he was going on ship, he would uh, read. So those books, you know, the titles and the picture on that attracted me at a very young age and uh, gave a kind of, uh, you know, inspiration to read, go on reading books. And that's how I started reading, uh, like many uh, books, you know, tried to read like small, small story books and all those things. And then uh, slowly I picked up uh, like, you know, to read in English, in Hindi and in uh, Kannada. Though I was not very good in Kannada. I was trying to do all those uh, readings. And um, I remember reading the Chandamama stories as well as those Bharati, Bharati, the collections, you know, where each, um, I mean, uh, one, one, it's a small book like uh, which which gives the uh, total uh, introduction and personality and the um, uh, development of a person, like, you know, a great people, like even Shankaracharyas and even Muhammad, uh, all, all, all of those this, this things are in those books, small books. So that is how I try to, you know, uh, start reading. And I remember when I was, I studied in a convent school where we had in the school assembly to read the newspaper headlines every day. We had to, you know, it was like uh, by roll number every day we were, uh, you know, there was a particular teacher for us, English teacher who was training us every day to how to read and uh, she was very you know keen on uh, um, uh, pronouncing the words and giving the intonations where I have to stop and how I have to go about reading and all those uh, reading technicalities she taught me in a way that I when I was not even aware of and that is how I could, I mean, I started and I picked up uh, reading. This is uh, 
this is my childhood days and slowly when i came to you know i developed a, um, a, a kind of a passion towards english literature of course i am a lover of all languages and i love to learn a new language even to this day uh like um two weeks before we had uh, one of the tamil nadu engineering college organized a pdfp uh, sorry ftp and they had invited different uh, uh, expertise uh, to talk about different languages like german french and all those i mean that's a part so like that i started developing to read in different languages and i started to make uh, my own um, uh, understanding like how the structure goes in each and every language um, you, and you i tried, huh? yeah huh? thank you thank you sir. Will, thank you, sir. Now, could we could we now take um, uh, could we call on uh, dr fatima to respond to the same question okay about how you developed an interest in reading what yes, were sir. some of the problems you had if you had any so thank you thank you very much uh, mohanraj sir uh, i had some kind of uh, similar experiences like uh, nagakala ma'am uh, because uh, my childhood was like uh, i was born uh, with books around me you know uh, my my father was an ardent reader so we had uh, all kinds of books like uh, uh, basically you know uh, Uh, societal development books because he was into that mostly the downtrodden upliftment of the downtrodden and so so uh, I, i i used to see him reading so, so that is how naturally that development that interest in reading came about and uh, we had a, a library in our uh, residential colony where uh, most of the people go on sundays to pick up books and uh, i found there was another room where where many of these people don't go and uh, when i and my siblings went inside we found a treasure trove full of uh, english books so we just used to pick whatever we could from there and uh, uh, that is how you know interest in uh, fiction and in uh, at home uh, the non fiction the philosophical books uh, developed and yes even i have a convent uh, school background where uh, we had a uh, well provided library Uh, so uh, uh, yes i read uh, uh, i used to read a lot of books started with uh, you know enid blyton and then nancy drew hardy boys uh, so th these were the basic books and i remember uh, narrating the stories to my siblings from that uh, from uh, the books and uh, they the, like uh, they too inculcated reading you know i don't say from me but uh, since all my older siblings were reading they too they too were reading and uh, there were books like perry mason and others uh, which i read so i found like uh, i am more interested in uh, you know uh, thrillers action and uh, um, uh, sometimes a uh, sentimental and everything so there was never a problem like uh, i couldn't uh, pick a book or uh, there was uh, never a problem uh, uh, where i faced that i have to uh, 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 difficulty in picking up the book it was the other way around i remember my uh mother always telling me to put down the book and come for lunch or something like that so uh, i i read a lot there was never a problem and uh, yeah okay uh, so yes sir i i i i i continued reading and i read even now you know so i read a lot uh, i read uh, different genres as uh, ma'am said so uh, i have no difficulty no challenges that i faced for reading and nobody forced me to read thank you thank you thank you could we check with wamshi wamshi uh, what's your experience like uh, how did you pick up reading who helped you uh, was there any influence on you who made you read books etc could you tell us hi sir good morning everyone uh, in reading uh, i am a background student of villages uh, they have many problems in uh, my village uh, proper they don't have proper schools uh, to read uh, libraries but uh, in my school uh, sam babu sir uh, to influence me to read an english books novels uh, uh, like uh, uh, shakespeare's novels and uh, john keats novels uh, is to is to uh, influence to me and i am reading to uh, i'm reading uh, a lot of books uh, like uh, in andhra pradesh uh, we have uh, some uh, 
చందమామ కథలు అండ్ బాలగంగ బాలగంగాధర్ తిలక్ బుక్స్ రీడ్ అలాట్ అండ్ ఐ లైక్ టు రీడ్ ఫ్రీడమ్ ఫైటర్స్ ఫ్రీడమ్ ఫైటర్స్ బుక్స్ యాజ్ వెల్ యాజ్ ఐఎమ్ రీడింగ్ అండ్ ఇన్ మై స్కూల్ డేస్ ఐ డోంట్ నో ద లాంగ్వేజ్ ఆఫ్ ఇంగ్లీష్ ఇన్ మై స్కూల్ డేస్ ఐఎమ్ ఐఎమ్ స్టడింగ్ ఇన్ తెలుగు మీడియం అబౌట్ ఇంటర్మీడియట్ ఆఫ్టర్ ఐ జాయిన్ ది డిగ్రీ ఇన్ ఆర్ట్స్ కాలేజ్ బిఎస్ స్పెషల్ ఇంగ్లీష్ ఐఎమ్ నౌ ఇన్ ఎంఏ ఇంగ్లీష్ ఐఎమ్ ఫేస్ వెరీ డిఫికల్టీస్ ఇన్ వెరీ డిఫికల్టీస్ ఇన్ లాంగ్వేజ్ ఇన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ ఐ కెన్ రీడ్ మోర్ 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 బుక్స్ ఇన్ డిజిటల్ 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 అండ్ నార్మల్ బుక్స్ ఇన్ లైబ్రరీ మై ఇన్ఫ్లుయెన్స్ టు శ్యామ్ బాబు సార్ ఈస్ హీఈస్ ఈస్ వెరీ good uh, very very good vamshi okay i think you have gone mute uh, vamshi i think you have gone mute hello yeah 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 again you are on mute you are again on mute vamshi you are on mute uh, please unmute yourself so uh, some technical issues okay okay it uh, doesn't matter now now we no again again it's gone on mute vamshi i think there is a technical problem we will come back to you okay we'll we'll come back to you but uh, we are happy that uh, you were able to cope with reading in english though you came from uh, a very different type of a background we appreciate that shall we go to uh, amita buch uh, to share her experiences of how she developed reading uh, reading habits Yes, thank you Mohan Raj. Uh, I'm very happy to be on the same platform with Mohan Raj because I'm very fond of him as he was our lecturer. Uh, I'm a much malign Guju and uh, I think Gujarati has actually helped me read English. How? Uh, for us, English started in Standard 8. So up to Standard 8, we were just off English, no English at all. and uh, even when it was introduced it was nothing but i am geeta and you are ramesh uh, and uh, we have not learned through systematic way phonetics and then alphabet nothing like that teachers used to read and i used to write down those words uh, in i mean those pronunciation in gujarati below each english text that is how i started uh, interacting with english i can't say learning english and the words uh, came again and again and that is how and after that i used to read directly in english but first i was reading in gujarati i was reading english in gujarati how are you so i would be reading in gujarati how are you and then uh, everyone would wonder okay oh you are picking up so fast even teachers would wonder but it was my uh, cunning smartness that uh, took me to you know speaking and reading english and once i after that i got confidence that okay yeah english which is outside me can become a part of me and i started you know feeling one with english and then uh that is how my journey or the struggle began <clears throat> i was mainly inspired by my father who was a lawyer he used to speak in english read in english and i used to wonder where is he reading from gradually uh, i was lucky enough to have grandfather also and he used to make us read loudly he would say in gujarati tani ne vacho means read aloud and that is how i got out of that fear of reading because uh, as a child you are not conscious about your mistakes even if they correct you you take it in a stride and that is how i started uh, reading english uh, in a faulty way but yes that is how i began reading english uh, it was never a pleasure for me uh till i got into the profession of journalism and teaching english 
because it was like greek and latin for us you know like it was like a uh, burden to me even when i was doing my ma ba english ma english because the basic background was gujarati and it was like uh, imposed on us it was only post masters in english literature i developed interest in english literature english reading and all that because uh, then i could relate to shakespeare's plays because they were very much akin to the life okay king lear and uh, even uh, uh, coriolanus especially yeah we'll come so to then i started actually. reading we'll, a brief we'll edition the aspect. simplified simplified yeah. versions of uh, 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 we'll come to this aspect in a while okay sorry so given us the background no, you are given us the background given us the background yes so we'll come to this we'll come to this while. in a little while okay okay, okay. So uh, can I continue? No, no, no. no. I'll I'll go to the next question. Okay, right. okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I hope I did yeah. answer your questions. No, no, you did. You did. You did. Yes, you thank did. you. Thank you. Um, so we had four people, but this was neatly divided into two and two. Two people who were very lucky because the family backgrounds were very very favorable. There were lots of books around. but i i was reminded of uh, the quote that uh, dr lal professor lal gave he says if you grow amidst books if someone coerces you to read you may not read you just leave he he quoted from a professor of uh, malayalam i forget the name of the person there were quite a few books but nobody asks you to read and then you begin to read that's uh, i think that that's been the case with both of you nobody asked you to read but you took to reading on your own whereas vamshi and amita had a very different type of a background uh, they had to struggle to pick pick up english uh, vamshi had his teacher sham babu who was uh, very helpful and amita had her father and grandfather who were a great support to her to pick up reading now having in fact my second question was based on that do you recall any person who influenced you to take and and who you took as a model in fact uh, nagakala has also mentioned this about her teacher who helped her vamshi krishna has mentioned amita has also mentioned now let's not worry about that person who might have influenced you but having learned to read having sort of become a profession proficient reader whether digitally or uh in print you know what type of a reader you are we have come across uh, various categories of readers there are slow readers there are reluctant readers none of you is a reluctant reader i happy i'm happy to note that but there can one, all of us can be regressive readers particularly when we are uh, attempting critical reading we may need to go back to what we have read quite often to reassure or to reinforce our own understanding or to make sure that we have not missed the point we could be regressive readers we could be compulsive readers there are quite a few compulsive readers uh, okay means unless they read something the day is not full that's we, we could be that and we could be any other type of reader so if you want to identify yourself as one of these readers what are you and what are the processes you adopt in order to read means do you have a fixed hour when you read do you lie down in your bed and read or are you comfortable sitting at a table and desk a uh, chair say sitting at a at your desk in order to read are you a disciplined reader casual reader or whatever it could be so could we could we begin with vamshi in this question vamshi vamshi seems to have lost his connection amita okay. vamshi are you okay can you respond to this question what type of a reader do you, do you think you are and how do you read uh, i will read in uh, night time uh, at my bed okay. uh, daily oh, i read in bed huh. yes yeah, yeah, daily i can read uh, one or two hours uh, Hmm. Uh, most of the biographies and the poetry and drama of uh, uh, hmm. ch- 
Shakespeare's and uh, John Keats. I like uh, John Keats poetry uh, mm. very much, and uh, Shakespeare's uh, is near to supernaturalism. Uh, uh, Shakespeare's no, supernaturalism. No, let me let me just ask you a sub question. Do okay. you read at a stretch, or you read a chapter, then keep it for a while, or uh, make some sort of a notes? Go back to that chapter. See, you remember somebody talked about SQ three R. Yes. Okay. You remember that? Uh, yes. One of, in one of the mm -hmm. sessions, you had yes. SQ three R, SQ four R, SQ five R, SQ six R. Uh, she spoke about that. Are you one of those who is a regressive reader? Regressive reader is not a bad thing. Means you read something and, and reread the and same you. thing that you have read so that you confirm whether your understanding is right or wrong. What type of reader? Are uh, I'm read. Uh, I will read uh, a book, uh, uh, one chapter, mm. uh, and make a note uh, in my mm. my rough note, and mm. what points are there. Uh, mm. And I'm uh, I'm searching Google and uh, what's the meaning of the oh, meaning okay, of the, okay, okay. Um, digital and the printed books. Uh, I I oh. much like uh, printed books, okay. likely uh, in the test of uh, my hand. Mm. So you are a very systematic. Reader, yes. absolutely a systematic reader. Amita, would you would you like to share about what type of a reader are you and how do you read? Yeah, I would love to do that. <clears throat> I am a very manmoji kind of a reader. Uh, I pick up depends on the content and the book that uh, how I read. Sometimes I am you know like a tossing and turning kind of a reader. Sometimes I read in bed. Sometimes depends on the content, you know, if it is a magazine, newspaper, I read sitting. But if it is a long kind of a novel or a book, I uh, re I remember one book I read through, uh, I may say in a in one breath, that was uh, Yagya Seni. I finished the book in one go. I think it is about 600 pages, it's but I, I was volume. That's what I want to say, it's a fact volume. That. So it depends on the content, how I read, mm -hmm. whether I read sitting, whether I read sleeping, whether, but I'm not very comfortable reading uh, from computer, okay. though I have developed that off late uh, reading on the phone, on a cell phone, because I think I'm developing uh, cataract. And so I need to expand the phones. Oh. That is why I have developed this habit. Otherwise, book. Having a book in hand is the best way for me to read. Yeah. And uh, I generally go by people's recommendation. They say that mm. you must read this book. And who says that matters a lot. And mm. then I pick up that book, I buy it in a day or two and I read it. Okay. Very good. Very good. So we have a systematic reader and we have an impulsive reader. Let's yes. see what type of a reader Nagakala is. Nagakala? Um, for me, actually, in my younger days, I think I was a very uh, systematic reader. But now, because of the time constraint and all those things, it makes. Otherwise, I I would like to sit and read a book. And um, I don't. I'm not a person to sleep and read. <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, but. I just, uh, you know, try to finish reading at a stretch. Oh, okay. You never uh, keep down a book, unput downable books. You read only unput downable books. <laughs> <laughs> Most of it, it will go like that. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Unless and until time, uh, you know, doesn't uh, stop me. Oh, that's that's fantastic. And uh, yeah, nothing much. Yeah, your yes, child. sir. Uh, I think, uh, as you mentioned, the first uh, the label, you know, regressive. Uh, I think when I was doing my research, it was on Vilkraj Anand's novels. Mm. So I had to read and go back and read. And uh, that was, mm. uh, again, a very uh, a depressing kind of topics that I had taken, you know, mm. Mm. Uh, untouchable uh, and uh, coolie, coolie and so on. So it was a very, very depressing topic uh, about the social exploitation in the society. So uh, I had to keep going back. But apart from that uh, period of time where I was doing my research, 
uh, if I'm reading, as Anita Van said, if I'm reading something casual, you know, uh, I want to really, really relax. Uh, uh, most of the time, I prefer, you know, lying down and reading. And sometimes, you know, when the book uh, I feel is getting over, I want to put it aside so that it will last a little bit longer. So uh, I do that. And the sitting on a desk and reading uh, something casual, I never do. Uh, I, uh, except for yeah. my maybe uh, my uh, my work, my professional work, my college work, when I'm on the desk like I'm here today. Uh, otherwise, uh, casual work, I never uh, sit here and do my yeah. So yeah. that's what I'm a mixture of uh, all no, those right. labels. Thank you. Yeah. It's it's quite interesting to know that we have all types of readers, and I think this is uh, we are we are uh, a window to the world. <laughs> the world is full of people like you and me. Um, I don't think many of us are real disciplined readers. It's very difficult to be disciplined readers. Uh, uh, God bless her, Nagakala is uh, very much that. Uh, many people are like that. But I'm, I'm happy that uh, we are impulsive readers. We take a book, we read, and most often it's the content that decides the type of reading that we do, which is which is very true, and it, that that has to be the uh, case. And uh, we read a variety of things, and uh, we sort of, to many of us, reading has become a second nature. It's almost become a second nature. With that, we will take up just one more question. Um, since all of you are ardent readers, there must be certain works, either authors. Or books. Actually, Amita has already mentioned Yagnaseni by uh, Pratibha Rai, which is an award-winning novel. I think she got her Nanapit Award for this particular novel, Pratibha Rai, a Odia uh, novelist, which is which is life of uh, Draupadi. Yagnaseni is life of Draupadi. Uh, she has mentioned there could be some author, there could be some book that has influenced us enormously and we don't mind reading that book or that author any number of uh, times okay it's, it's quite possible and it's also possible that each time we read this particular book the book has something new to offer uh, i'll just mention one example of course i have quite a few books of this type in my life one of the books that influenced me when i was very young was old man and the sea by ernest hemingway I don't know. I, I still keep reading it. I, I'm, I have lost count how many times I have read it. But I still keep reading it. And each time I read it, I feel I'm reading it for the first time. And there's something new that I discover, which I had missed in my previous reading. That's that stayed with me. Of course, there are also other books like that. This must have happened to all of us sometime. Could you could you let us know about it? Shall we begin with Fatima on this question? Yes, sir. Uh, I think uh, there were quite a few books that uh, uh, I go back and read again and again. Mm -hmm. um, one particular book that uh, impressed me and which I recommend to my students also is, you know, uh, Paolo Coelho's uh, Coelho's uh, Alchemist. Alchemist. Uh, yes, because. Uh, 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 they can start reading it like a storybook or uh, they can get in depth with that. I remember making notes uh, beside that, underlining certain things. Excellent. You know. Allegory. Excellent. Yes. Allegory. So I keep going back to that. That uh, as a, yeah. And uh, apart from that, uh, some fiction that I uh, read and uh, reread was, you know, uh, J.K. Rowling's uh, Harry Potter, which <laughs> yeah. I didn't get, you, get, get into for a long time, actually, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Like uh, my uh, my children, they're saying like I don't know what I'm missing by not reading it. So I once I got into it, I was so impressed with the way she uh, uses some certain vocabulary, introduces new vocabulary, coined words and all. So at a stretch, once I finished all uh, seven, I went back and read like that three times. I read and I was thinking I really need to do a research on her books also because. Uh, 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 there were so many things uh, that she introduces that can that we can apply for uh, psychology or for the students or for anything. So uh, that uh, impressed me a lot. So those are the things that I yeah, would I uh, go back to. 
I am I am with you. If you read J.K. Rowling, yes. you understand your learner's mind. Okay, yes. and that's extremely important for every yes. teacher. It's yes. necessary to know what my learner reads so that I can tune my teaching, tune oh, my yes. materials. Yes, I do that. Learner. I want to be uh, up, yeah. up to date with what my students are that's, reading. Yes. Exactly. I think that's that's a that's an excellent quality that Thank any you. teacher can have. Amita. Uh, you have already mentioned Yagnaseni. No, I would like to talk about another book. Okay, okay. Uh, if you can see, mm -hmm. the book is Celestine, Celestine Prophecy. Mm -hmm. And a uh, very intriguing, very interesting aspect of this book is we all wonder whether life is uh, destiny, coincidence or our decisions. And this book really like uh, takes you through that journey and you have to find out yourself. Even like uh, I feel that the reason why uh, I attended this seminar has some purpose. Okay. And uh, I picked up this book yesterday. I was thinking of uh, talking about uh, drop, I mean the Yagya Saini, but that is not the book which I visit again and again. That is the one which I give to many people. <coughs> but this Celestine, I would say Celestine, though it is also said as Celestine prophecy. Uh, I would like to talk about it. One is that you pick up that book as and when there is some context uh, to the book with your life. At that time, something is happening in your life and you pick up that book. There are some nine insight talked about it. <clears throat> so I picked this book when I was at a loose end, what we say. And that is exactly what the uh, the the we can't say the, the author, but the uh, uh, the the hero of the uh, what we we use a term for that uh, protagonist protagonist yes. It's, it's uh, so it is going parallel, and that is most interesting about this book. You pick up when uh, the the protagonist is going through certain phase, and you are also going through that phase. It's very interesting. And the reason why I go back to it again and again uh, to see how this uh, uh, the, the writer has been able to bring out these elements in these books, this book. Uh, then I go to the details of the, uh, you know, sentences, the expressions, the phrases, what has made this book so interesting. So there are various reasons why I go back to this book again and again. And I think now again, I'll pick up. I had left it at one point and I'll pick it up now Fine. in oh, a new I, context. Thank you. Thank you. That's a, yeah. that's a very interesting book. It's actually, yes. it reads your mind and it, become, it gets, you, you tend to identify yourself with several of the things that the book. Uh, yes. And you don't get yeah. answer to any right. question yes. unless that's you what, take that journey. It makes you think. It makes you think. Yes. Uh, Wamshi. Uh, Wamshi. Yeah. Yes, sir. Is there some author, some book that has influenced you so much? You did talk about King Lear, you did talk about Macbeth, you did talk about Cymbeline, you talked about all this. But can you think of one book that you feel it's uh, invaluable to you? It has changed your life in some way? Uh, I'm reading Telugu uh, novels, sir, uh, Amravati Kadalu. Oh, okay. Telugu, mm. Amravati Shank Kadal and Shankara Manchi. Uh, Shankara Manchi, yes. Uh, mm. I'll read mm. this book, sir. Uh, mm. I think. Yeah, I know. I know that book. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, Amrutam Gurusan Ratri, Devarkonda Balganga the Telak. Mm. No, no. Uh, why, is, why is it that you like Amravati Kadalu? It's a book of a very book. small yes. stories. Small stories yeah. It's a book of anecdotes. Huh? Yeah. Yes, why, sir, why do you like that book? Uh, it's connected to real life nature, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, real to life uh, and uh, very moral stories there. Uh, I much like the stories about uh, uh, how we how we live and uh, what we do. But that those stories may not be may not relate to your life because they are about <laughs> sir, um, around a temple. What happens around a temple? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Okay? And in a small starting... village called Amaravati. Uh, yes, not sir. today's Amravati, but Amravati <laughs> of almost 100 years ago. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, mostly I read uh, John Keats' uh, poems like uh, Ode to mm. Nightingale. Uh, mm. uh, 
as a ode to nightingale is a very uh, much in um, i read uh, more than once sir. okay uh, it's okay. uh, uh, it's often says that the poet no, I, must I not think, yeah. uh, no okay okay bamshi i understand because uh, you are you are still in a yes, formative but... stage you are no yeah you are still in a formative stage uh, the question that i have asked needs a little bit of uh, larger exposure to reading for so that you can make up your mind you are still in in such a state of flux that you are not able to decide i'm sure in about 5 years, suppose i ask you this question 5 or 10 years down the line you will be able to respond to it in a very different way i thank i you. really wish you the best okay, okay thank you. now let's uh, go to nagakala nagakala do you have something to share with us about uh, a great influence that you have yeah. had yes sir. Um, actually Don't as fatima ma'am said <laughs> as fatima ma'am said uh, hmm. there are a lot of authors like there are a lot of, lot of books like we need to read again and again hmm. but one particular one like when i was in my masters i picked up and i still read even to this day is uh, jain paul sartre's wow nausea <laughs> okay okay uh, <laughs> because something uh, new philosophy and right. uh, existentialism was, yes mm. existentialism mm. so that uh, really may, you know attracted uh, like like was something like when uh, my teacher was explaining mm. i found something interesting and i started you know reading and those days we were not able to get the books Mm-hmm. and with great difficulty i asked somebody to get me a book i think i got it from uh, us or something no i my university library had that no na- no uh, in <laughs> our days like when we were in uh, doing masters this european classics were all difficult to get it mm-hmm. either there wouldn't be pages or something like that but now i have a copy and whenever i find time <laughs> i i go back and read that that's book. a wonderful book yeah uh, you you must also read unmanable yes by sarth okay jean paul sarth unmanable is another which is which is a parallel to nausea okay yeah, i think i think we had a very interesting uh, discovery of ourselves we didn't know i think we we met almost unknown to each other except of course i knew amita from a long time Uh, but now in these last 35 40 minutes 10:43 is when we started and uh, it's about 45 minutes we have got to know each other so much with our reading habits and what we like what we don't like and there are so many commonalities among us and that's a very happy thing i'm sure our uh, audience have uh, also been listening to us keenly and probably they may have some questions to any one one of you or all of you and if there are questions maybe we can uh, take those questions in the next uh, 10 to 12 minutes that we have with us uh, are there questions lena are there questions for us yes sir uh first question is what about the speed of reading do you read everything with the same speed i think this is a person okay okay uh, how can we increase the speed of reading ah, okay would one of you like to respond to this uh, sir may i yes please uh, you know the reading speed uh, differs from uh, like uh, for what we are reading you know is it for pleasure or is it for uh, examinations or uh, is it for something research or something so uh, the speed uh, uh, varies and uh, Uh, it is not necessary to uh, read word for word yes so we skip i think it comes with practice the earlier the speakers in the past few days also they talking about reading uh, where uh, you know uh, like how we can uh, inculcate that uh, habit by skipping sometimes but it it needs practice so initially uh, they have to read uh, slowly and then the speed can pick up That, that's fine. That's a very, very good response that Fatima gave. Sir, I would like it's, to add to this. Can I? Yes, yes please. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that uh, it is a myth in the sense uh, students have got that notion that if you read fast, 
you are a better reader but i feel that your purpose should be communication especially when you are reading aloud when you are reading silently speed does matter or it does count but when you are reading you know like uh, for understanding and you are conveying it to reader the reading has to be communicative it you should be communicating what you want to communicate and it should be with the proper pauses and proper uh, you know stops over there <clears throat> so and it it speed comes automatically once you are comfortable with the uh, the content and you have strategized reading so we should not focus on speed in the beginning no i yeah you are right okay i'll just uh... But because pauses and other things don't matter here because mostly it is silent reading when we are, when we are thinking of this yeah thinking of silent reading i think i take the point from both of you while speed reading is content based speed reading is also purpose based mm. but just developing speed without comprehension is useless totally to to the useless there were some experiments about speed reading long ago um, people like edward fry and others did a lot of work in the area of uh, fast reading this was in late 60s and mid 70s these experiments happened we had a teacher in uh, cifl called george k pt george who did a lot of work in the area of uh, fast reading and he did produce a book called stairway course reading where he has suggested some techniques of uh, reading very fast but reading fast per se is not a good idea reading fast reading with speed reading with comprehension is what really matters and it depends as patiraji rightly said on the content that you are reading and also as amita Uh, reinforced it with purpose the content and purpose should decide the uh, speed second question is there a second question yes sir so the question is from ms divya rai i would like to ask what is the best suited reading style should develop in students at early stages best suited style yeah yes sir reading reading style okay. should develop in students at early stages one of you like to nagakala would you like to respond to this any style of reading that you would like to recommend if no one else then i would like to yeah yes, yes yeah, yeah. Hmm. i think uh, reading aloud is the best way to uh, begin with hmm. reading aloud uh, because that uh, teaches us the pauses meaning uh, chunk uh, meaning uh, reading with meaning and the teacher can also uh, contribute correct and put things in place so i think that to begin with reading aloud is the best moreover we generally read from our minds we don't read from the text and if we read from the text then it corrects many things automatically and that is why reading aloud i think is the best way to begin with i agree with uh, amita uh, that is uh, amita ma'am sorry um yeah reading aloud in the initial stages I mean, until a certain age you know that would be better because uh, it gives you all around you know training, training yourself to your voice and to all those things and then you can uh, start going to silent reading when you are able to comprehend the text um uh, fatima would you like to add something to this i feel uh, so um, uh, as amita ma'am said you know uh, loud reading in the initial stages where somebody can guide them if they are just reading on their own with no uh, guidance i think it would again be a uh, a useless uh, activity so when somebody is there to guide they can read loud and then uh, they can uh, uh, shift uh, to reading silently and uh, 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 earlier speakers had said about uh, not checking the dictionary for uh, meanings and all but i i feel like uh, you know referring to some meanings would also help it will not slow down it will not slow down the reading but it would help and if they make a little uh, notes even if it is a fiction that they are reading 
I think uh, uh, if they take it up again to re read, re read it, it would help them better. Yeah, yeah. You were referring to Professor Lal. Professor Lal was the yes. one who yes. mentioned that uh, using yes. a dictionary often yes. in the course of reading yes. may interrupt your reading. Yes. That's how he was yeah. mentioning. Right. Okay. I, 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 I agree with most of you. Now, since Divya's question particularly refers to early stage, there are quite a few things that we have to think of. Now, generally, we begin with some sort of a systematic reading, the, the letters of the alphabet, etc. Now, this makes it extremely mechanical. Can you randomize it? Okay. Means instead of giving the letters of the alpha for alphabet from A to Z, can you mix these and introduce the learners to the words and allow them to infer the letters, decipher the letters, and then learn the letters of the alphabet. There is a very interesting book called uh, Living English. It's, it's a beautiful book called Living English. This was produced uh, by West Bengal Board of Secondary Education early 80s, in early 80s. Um, I think th those were the days when Congress government uh, ruled West Bengal. Siddharth Shankar Ray was the chief minister. And he had taken particular interest and developed these course books. Those course books have a, a uh, introduce you to a very different type of reading. That's one. Second thing is, is it possible for us to make our children hold the book in hand? Unless they hold the book in hand, they cannot take to reading. So how do you produce the book that's attractive to the child? And if this book has lots of pictures, which can be associated with a text, and if there can be a constant association between the text and the picture, that motivates them to reading. And that makes an abstract concept, like a letter A is abstract, that becomes real, that takes a shape, that becomes a reality when they can associate it with a word and a picture this is this is what one can do at the very initial stage and once this is done once the child takes to the book once the child feels that he or she finds book attractive and useful i think that's the best way to introduce uh, reading at an early stage uh, now that leaves us three minutes i cannot express my happiness at uh, meeting each one of you discussing these things with you. Uh, I'll not say much. I'll just say a very warm hug to each one of you. And thank you very much. It was such a lovely time I had with you. Um, thank you very much. And thanks to all the audience uh, and uh, the two questions that came out, <coughs> relevant questions that came out. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. You, sir. Uh, if you also... can give me half a minute. Uh, yeah. to say something, yes, you know, uh, sorry, Nakala. Uh, you know, I never realized like uh, a topic, uh, uh, one of the skills of English uh, reading uh, can be stretched over eight days and we have uh, that much to do about reading. And it is really so surprising that we really have so much to think about just one skill of language. Yes. So uh, the sessions were wonderful and I'm uh, still learning a lot which I want to implement to, to my students. And uh, thank you all for being uh, here. And uh, thanks for giving the opportunity also, Mohan Raj. Yes, on that note, I would like to make a request. Uh, just, I would future. like to make a request to you, Fatimaji. Yes, sir. In your college, since you are the dean, yeah. if we could uh, start a reading club, we will be yes. yeah. I think Yes, Prof. we have a literary will... club. Yeah, we, Professor, there we want to make yeah, sure. uh, reading club a part of that actually. I, I think yes. Professor Elango yes, will sure. get in touch with you. On yes, that. sure. We'll do that. Thank you very much for that suggestion. Nakalas, I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, no, no. Thank you. Thank you so much. I just wanted to say uh, thanks. Uh, in this way, we just got to meet each other and know about you all. And that was uh, really indeed a pleasure. And thanks to Eltai for giving us, I mean, especially me, uh, an opportunity to express myself. Thank you, Dr. Mohanraj. It was very, very uh, insightful and uh, 
you know to know about some of your points also thank, thank you sir yes thank you all you. on behalf of the yes sir. yeah yes over to you guys sir yeah. yes yes sir on behalf of the organizing team we would like to thank all the speakers who were today in this discussion and i thank you once again i thank you for sharing your real life experience on how you started uh, and uh, developed reading habit in you it was partly nostalgic as well as moving uh, i especially thank dr mohan raj sir for leading the team in an organized manner thank you sir thank you all thank, thank you, you ma'am thank you thank you thank you very much thank you thank you thank you thank you very much thank you thank yes. you ma'am